Well, thank you, Peter. And, of course, it is D-Day for Parramatta and Newcastle, as you and Paul have pointed out. And the Blue and Gold Army, they have certainly come out to cheer on their heroes. In fact, many thousands of them still outside trying to get in. The kickoff has already been delayed 10 minutes to facilitate late comers as this uh, do or die match to make the quarterfinals prepares to get underway. There's the team. Maybon Man, Wire, Kelly, Lawler, Dimmick, Freeman, Smith, Pay, Spence, McKenzie, Campbell, Morgan, and Ronnie Hildich, the coach. The Eels looking for the quarterfinals, but so too are Newcastle. Their form has been, I was going to say disgraceful, three points from an available 16. That's all they've got from their last eight. They've got to get it together tonight. One of the competition front runners earlier on. A Davis, Grogan, Godden, Ainsco, Beecham, the Johns brothers, Glanville, Muir, Marquette at the back, Harrigan, Butterfield up the front, McCormick in between them, Malcolm Reilly the coach. And so much hinging on this side tonight that so many people have been expecting things from. Steve Roach on the sideline. This will be good. You can feel the atmosphere. Yeah, this is going to be a sensational game. Look, I'm a big fan of the Newcastle pack, but to tell you the truth, for the last eight weeks, they haven't stood up apart from Anthony Butterfield. So I expect a big performance from them tonight. And they're going to pinpoint Jimmy Dimmick. He's, they see him as the danger if they are to go into the top eight and cause any trouble. All right, we've got Newcastle from... Left to right in front of a very big crowd. Paul McBlain as the referee. Newcastle there. From left to right in front of, as I said, uh, a big crowd with a couple of thousand still outside trying to get in. And Marty McKenzie it is that brings it back to the 10 metre line. McKenzie. First man tackle, Parramatta first uh, set of six and the first penalty of the game goes to McBlain, uh, from McBlain to Parramatta back on their own 20 metre line. Somehow rather I'm getting a mix of uh, the PA announcer in my headphones and I can assure you it's quite off-putting with my own voice coming back from, uh, from some promotional tape that they're running. So Parramatta then, 35 metres out from their own line on the end of the first penalty and this is Morgan who's tackled now he'll play the ball back and Parramatta coming away to the left of the ground and Dean Pay is wrapped up and put down by Adam Muir and Paul Marquette the second rowers for Newcastle then Jason Smith with a face ball across to Kelly the young centre he tries to get around Grogan Grogan shuts him down takes him into touch beautiful pass by Jason Smith great pass from Jason Smith but a little bit of inexperience shown here by Kelly I really think the only time you can be taken over the sideline is right down on the corner post. Grogan coming across, it wasn't the last tackle, so really Kelly needed to head infield a little bit earlier. Scrum win and feed from Andrew Johns, long ball to his brother Matthew. He takes him on, good tackle from Kelly and Dimmick. Dimmick playing in the 5'8 role tonight, a position that he's quite accustomed to in the 13 jumper. 35 away from their own line they have now their first set of six for the night and here's the equalizer in the penalty uh, count going to newcastle and they take a quick penalty kicking towards the michael cronin side of the ground and the tap will be taken about 39 meters into Parramatta's area for butterfield to take it ahead and again another penalty and there's a bit of a punch up but uh, mcblain was right on the spot he's called a touch judge over and has already given the penalty. Well, Troy Campbell, the man being spoken to, and he's been in a little bit of trouble the last couple of weeks. A very aggressive young player. Jamie Ainsco coming in and disputing things with Marty McKenzie. But it was that man there who the referee had words to, along with his captain, Dean Pay. And Andrew Johns opting to take the kick 24 metres out, about 15 in from touch. So a lot of the hopes of um, the Newcastle side tonight will certainly centre on this young man, Andrew Johns. He is best described as a confidence kicker. He uh, just simply oozes class, but he gets better with the goal kicking if he strikes the first one. Three minutes into the game. 
110 for the season. Andrew Jones. It's about 17 metres in from the Michael Cronin touchline. He struck it beautifully. And there they are, the first points of the game. Newcastle over Parramatta, two points to nil. And that augurs well for Newcastle with Andrew Johns successful at his first attempt. And some real discipline from the Eels early in this game has cost them two penalties in a row, got them down the other end of the field within kicking distance. It's fine to be enthusiastic, but they've got to make sure they control themselves. Chris Lawler here looking to drive the ball deep. And hopefully for the Eels, force a mistake in the next set of six. Chris Lawler then off the left foot and he sends it down into the corner. And it's for Newcastle to bring back through Mark Glanville. And 25 metres away from his own line. They go onto the blind side for Harrigan to meet them. And three Parramatta players were there waiting for him. McCormick, he realised there were no markers. He was all set to pass and then he pinched a, a 10 metre break for the Newcastle side. Oh, that was a very good tackle by Spence. Butterfield was the ball carrier. Now Matthew Johns in a short pass. Muir loses it. And it's with Morgan for Parramatta. 40 metres away from the Newcastle line. Good field position as Russell Wire now carries the ball down to the 30 metre line. Campbell a dummy half. And uh, the number 10 is McKenzie. Marty McKenzie, formerly from Brisbane. 22 metres out from the line. Freeman goes from the left and works on the blind side. Wire is there to take it within about 15 metres of the line. Newcastle, two points to nil. First points on the board from the penalty. Then Smith and taken by Dimmick. I don't know that he was meant for it. Smith again handling it. Maybon is with it. And Maybon will play the ball on five as they come across for the kick from Dimmick. Dimmick's kick nicely placed, but then Grogan fell back. Read it well. And Brett Grogan takes it to ground and then plays it. And it's gone across here for Robbie O. Davis to be slammed down by Campbell. A yeah, nice piece of work there from Grogan. Not only did he catch the football, he went to ground quickly because he knew if he tried to stay up, it had been forced back into the end goal. Made by Harrigan then, and uh, out from dummy half comes Beecham. Beecham playing it inside the 20-metre line. This is Adam Muir, and Muir is taken by Campbell and by McKenzie. And Newcastle working it out through the forwards, and then for Andrew Johns. And he puts it down on the bounce for Maybon to make it back beyond the 40-metre line. That's a good start to a new set of six for Parramatta for Maybon. Then a floating pass for Freeman, a short ball for Wire. And almost on the halfway line, it'll be played back to Campbell. And then a running Jason Smith this time. Pitch forked into the ground by Butterfield. Played back for Freeman, then given on for Morgan. And Morgan is met there by Harrigan. Harrigan together with Brad Godden, they wrap him up, the young front row forward from Parramatta. Here's his partner getting a pass off for Dean Pay, and Pay was put down by Butterfield and McCormick. McCormick back in the nine shirt, replacing Lee Jackson. Here's Kelly, and then losing the football, Parramatta, and a penalty has gone to them. Late call on the 10 metres. Just wondering if it's within kicking range of the Eels. Chris Lawler, he's got a big boot on him. He's got the outside backs here, Grogan. Also, Godden for being up inside the 10. I've got to say this, I've seen a bit of Newcastle lately. This is the most enthusiastic they've looked in defence for a long, long time. It surprises me, Parramatta not taking the shot from 30 metres out. It's almost a windless night, unless, unless a breeze has sprung up. No sign of a blocker? No, not at the moment, but uh, Parramatta have got to run a little bit straighter if they are to take this Newcastle pack on. Oh, look. McKenzie away for Freeman. Freeman tries to get through. He's pulled down about 12 metres out from the line. Campbell then listens for the call from the playmakers and Smith with that ball. That's off the feet. That's a try. That's a try. And there's the pass went forward. It did not go forward. Off the feet. No knock on. Parramatta a try. Oh, that was absolutely brilliant stuff from Chris Lawler. The man who was nearly a hero with the drop goal last week. He scored their first try last week. He's got one tonight. Jason Smith, if we freeze it there, you can see he's thrown the cutout pass. Well, how far forward's that? Dead set a metre. In all, the, in all the excitement, sure, it came off the boot, but this put bar, pass 
Has Deadset gone a metre forward? He's passed it right on the line. And it's landed well. It's landed a metre in front of him. So that's one they all missed. Well, the points are on the board. Lawler, here's the pass again. He was on the line. And not that that always is conclusive, but Paul, I'm sure, is spot on when he estimates at least a metre forward. But Chris Lawler has been awarded a try, and, and Parramatta lead four points to two. And take nothing away from Chris Lawler. The quick thinking was sensational. Realising he had no chance of, of catching the football. Threw the foot out. Kept it on the toe. And now an opportunity from just about where the penalty was awarded to convert his own try. 22 metres out. Five metres in from touch. Lawler's kick is not going to come round sufficiently. But Parramatta in the early minutes, after eight minutes in fact, lead Newcastle four points to two. Welcome back, Monday Night Football from one of the great rugby league stadiums, Parramatta. And uh, a very healthy crowd in for the first of Monday Night Football in the western suburbs. And uh, Parramatta doing the right thing by their fans as Campbell makes an extravagant run. Taking him about 35 metres away from his own line, Morgan joins in, so does Smith. The pass to Kelly looked forward from Smith, but Kelly will play it 42 metres away from the Newcastle line. And the referee gives a penalty to Parramatta. Great run there from Troy Campbell right up the middle, gained them 30 metres, and we saw the ball come out wide. That's the third time in five minutes that Parramatta have caught Newcastle short down this side of the field. Jason Smith is lurking down here, and he's popping up some great balls. A couple of class touches from that man too, Stuart Kelly. It was a tough catch under pressure there. A good game in his debut last week against the Roosters. And it looks like a, a real find as Marty McKenzie into the Newcastle forwards, driven back to the 29 metre mark. McKenzie will play it now, just inside the 30 metre line. And then for Freeman, Freeman hesitatingly gave it to Morgan. He almost gave it to Dean Pay in an offside position. Now Freeman calls it back onto the, the wide blind side, and young Kelly is seeing plenty of football tonight. They're playing towards his side of the ground, young Kelly, when the centres split, and then from Smith, and look at the passes he's throwing. Dimmick and Maybon, wire goes without it, and Mahn, Scotty Mahn playing his 100th first grade game, I believe, tonight for Parramatta, then for Dimmick. Dimmick inside the 30 metre line, pulled down from behind, a diving tackle from Keith Beecham, an ordinary play the ball, but then the defence was all over him. Freeman's kick is judicious. There's a chance it came off Parramatta. Young Kelly is down and unconscious at the moment. He's not too well. Once again, though, so the, the numbers out here, you, uh, Parramatta had three on one as the kick went up. So they're reading it well, and uh, Malcolm really has got to do something about this. the defence on this side. He's come down very hard right on his noggin. They might be playing towards Kelly Centre, but I don't think it's any coincidence they're playing towards Brett Grogan's wing either. At times, young Grogan can come up with a mistake in defence. So back with Newcastle bringing it away from their own line. It was the last tackle, the turnover was ordered, and young Kelly is back on his feet now. He's had a, a fine start to the game. Robert Adam Muir plays it inside the 20 now. Sorry, Ray Kelly's left the field. Robert Muchmore comes back into the centres. Start of the game there last week. The high tackle will be penalised here on Andrew Johns. Marty McKenzie looks like he was the culprit. Good to see Andrew Johns. He saw that the outside backs were covered, so he put the foot down, went for the hole. It's always good for a halfback, even early in the game, to take on the opposition. 45 metres out from their own line. Newcastle come back via their captain, Harrigan. McCormick then. Oh, gets a bad play, the ball from Harrigan. And McCormick has no alternative but to take another tackle. A wasted tackle for Newcastle. And this is Butterfield. 
With a strong run, Tony is put away by Morgan, who... ...wasn't standing directly in front. Matthew Johns combines with Adam Muir, as they so often do. And Muir will play the ball. 28 metres out, they keep on the wrap on the left of the ground. Oh, Marquette was absolutely smashed then. Over the top by Dean Pay, then for Matthew Johns, then the brother Andrew, into the air. Ains goes offside for mine. Underneath it is Amman. He took it out in the field of play and they try to force him. And the referee has ordered a line drop out. Well, he's very casual there, wasn't he, Scott Mann? He took it OK, but really no effort to try and improve his position. A very poor play here. I think that Scott Mann thinks he's catching the ball in the in-goal area. And that wasn't the case at all. He, and he had to know that he was a meter in play. The slip didn't help, but he had to get to the ground, as we saw Brett Grogan do at the other end of the field earlier in the match. By the way, some good news on Stuart Keller. He's only winnered, and he'll be back very soon. It's a pretty ordinary line dropout. It, it came out much better than it deserved. The rolling football taken back by Robbie o Davis, about 38 metres out from the Parramatta line, and then... Harrigan putting a fend on one, stepping around another, sliding a pass. Oh, good work, Harrigan. Now they're 28 metres out from the Parramatta line, from McCormick into Matthew Johns. Oh, he's offside. Well, he's ordered that the, the ball went forward on deflection. I would have thought he was offside. Watch it again. Marty McKenzie leaving the field now. Anthony Bonus coming on. McKenzie may be going to the, the blood bin. Like he stayed down a couple of tackles ago. Or he's copped a knock up around the eye area. So Parramatta then. With Mayborn. 35 metres out from the Parramatta line. And this is Bonus, who's on in 15. And he gets his first welcome to the match with a good, strong hit from Butterfield and Marquette. This is Dean Payne. Stuart Kelly back on for the Eels. As Campbell comes selectively back for Freeman to link with Maybon and then Kelly. And Kelly is pulled down by Newcastle. Um, about 45 metres out from the Newcastle line. The Eels leading by two points. This is Morgan. Morgan playing it back and Campbell offloading for Freeman to put it in the air. It's not a good bomb. And the Eels allowed to take it through Scott Mann. And that is the turnover. About 22 metres out from the Newcastle line. They play the ball quickly. And Keith Beecham makes very good yardage. It takes him out to the 40. And then from Aidsco for Glanville. And Glanville gets it almost to the halfway line. Second tackle on this set of six. McCormick. Looking for his runners, taking a second man play in the shape of Paul Marquette. And that's the third tackle as he goes back onto the blind side for Andrew Johns to beat Dimmick. Get a one-handed pass away, but Spence is there. And Spence comes back for Parramatta to the halfway. A timely interception there from Matthew Spence. Good bus made. It was Jim Dimmick who missed the tackle again. He's missed two in the last three tackles. He may well be the, the target area for the Newcastle side. Of course, he is carrying that knee injury. Bonus again. Taken down by Marquette originally. And now it's Jason Smith who floats the pass for Kelly. Kelly's got a chance. He uses Maybon. The Yells. They're in again. Parramatta goes in for their second try. And no question marks on this one. Eight points to two. 16 minutes gone. Rod Maybon gets the try. And this gave them possession. A bust made by Andrew Johns. A fingertip intercept from Matthew Spence. Within a couple of rucks, the combination once again of Jason Smith and Stuart Kelly comes up trumps. Beautiful ball here from Jason Smith. He comes across and we freeze it there. You can see that this man, Grogan, is already coming across. And the straightness of the run from Lawler is the key, uh, from Kelly is the key. He slides through too much speed. The inside support from Maybon. He was a great performer for them last week. He started this game in the right fashion. But this ball is a corker. I've got no doubt Ronnie Hillage has done a great job. He's found something on the video, found a weakness in Newcastle's defence, and they're peppering it down this short side. 
and Newcastle just are not numbering off. And why Brett Grogan continues to hang behind that line is beyond me. Why he doesn't come up in the line like your normal wingers do, well, I don't know. It was only early in the tackle count, wasn't it? Too much speed, Stuart Kelly, for Brad Godden. He got outside him. And I think that man on screen has been the best buy for the Eels so far this year. The service that they've got out of Rod Maybon since coming early in the season, he's just been one of their best every week. So Lawler from 12 metres out, he takes plenty of sand, but he gets the two points and the crowd. Well, that shot, obviously, with the Newcastle supporters, and there are hundreds of them here. Parramatta leading by eight points after 17 minutes. Great atmosphere here at the stadium at Parramatta. And Monday Night Football sees the home side leading Newcastle 10 points to two as we welcome you back. Bonus it is who's playing the ball for the Eels. 12 metres out from his own line. And now for Jim Dimmick. Dimmick picked up and driven back. Some classical football here from Jason Smith in particular. He's been throwing passes that have really been line ball one of them that led to a try we feel certain was forward but the majority of his passes have been absolute classics this is spence now who played his role in the previous try scored by maybon campbell there gets it away for freeman and freeman's kick down to take a bounce a couple of bounces in fact before o'davis retrieves and runs it away from his own 10 meter line he's He's monstered there by Mackenzie and Dimmick. Back on his own 20-metre line. And Newcastle, he could throw a handkerchief across the entire team at the moment. There they are, look at them. As, uh, the, ball, the ball is brought out now by is that Butterfield, or is it uh, Glanville? In fact, it was the latter. And now it's Adam Muir, who's held on the 40-metre line as McCormick looks around for a call he's going on the blind side himself mccormick reaching the halfway line but the eels are really really fired up for this one and looking the better side as uh, robbie o davis is forced to get a kick in and it rolls down for Parramatta to bring it out of the corner and maybon is pulled down by grogan back on the Parramatta 20 meter line as the eels prepare to put robert much more back into the game again 25 metres out from their own line as they go about using up the set of six without mistake down the centre of the park before the kick. And the bonus has been hit by a beauty. And Marquette it was who, who made the tackle. Now a loose pass and then Gary Freeman knocks on. So that's the mistake that the Newcastle Knights were looking for. Little knock on there from Gary Freeman. No argument from him either. As this scrum prepares to pack 35 metres out from the Parramatta line. Newcastle obviously needing to be the next team to score. Yeah, well inside the, the distance there, the, the Parramatta defenders got up very quickly, led by Russell Wire. Imagine Andrew Johnson. I thought they'd have kicked for goal from there. Not a tough kick. In fact, it's a differential, so that's probably why they didn't kick the goal. Thanks for well, McCormick takes the tap, and Harrigan is pulled down. About five metres away from the Parramatta line. A chance here for Newcastle. Butterfield. He's put down. Same position as before. McCormick. And then for Andrew Johns, his brother. And then Adam Muir. Muir puts on the fend and brilliantly pulled down about a metre out. Who was the tackler? Maybon. It comes from McCormick. Away for Andrew Johns. A long pass for Ainsco. A floating pass. Comes off the hands of Grogan. And into touch. Well, there's nothing going right for them, is there? Newcastle tonight. Try was on. The last pass gone to ground. Great tackle by Maybon. A try saver on Muir. It's Ainsco. The primary def defence has come in. Lawler's come in. Grogan's got the free run, but a dusty pass and it wasn't him. If you're looking for the reason that this scrum is packing where it is you've got to go back to the maybon tackle he stopped a certain try from adam muir 
as Demick plays the ball and the, the Eels come away. Outside, oh, Jason Smith going to ground under traffic. Got a pass away and then Dimmick knocks on. Well, what Jason Smith did did not deserve another player to knock on in the face of absolute class. And he got hammered too, Jason Smith in the tackle. It's a, it's a big hit. Oh, Newcastle, Marquette again, got him under the ribs. And from here, just the players standing around, nothing doing and not paying attention. Yeah, he's in trouble, Dimmick, out there. I really think that if they take him on, he's in all sorts of trouble defensively. Played by O Davis then, and they go down the blind side, and Glanville thought about getting it away to Ainsco. Players jostling up in the background, Beecham and Marne. Then for Matthew Johns, a short ball for Marquette. And again, he's smothered by the Eels' defence. 15 metres out from the line. Can Newcastle get it over the line this time? Andrew Johns, his pass for Grogan. Oh, Grogan beat Lawler. He beat him easily and goes in to score. Well, he's been taking a peppering, Brett Grogan, but he's got a little bit back himself to smile about. Parramatta 10, Newcastle 6. Here's the try again. Yeah, one-on-one -on -one here, Brett Grogan. The big fend on Chris Lawler. Not much space to work in. Lawler, again, he was heading in field. And the big fend, it was an ordinary attempted at tackle. Kelly comes up with one right on the line. But Grogan scores a good try here. Good back line movement. They were nice and deep. Yeah, he just redeemed himself, didn't he, Brett Grogan? He's uh, been under all sorts of pressure out wide. They've been running at him, no doubt about it. And he hasn't handled it too well. But uh, this is good stuff. One-on-one. -on -one. It's a super-duper fend. Right up there in the shoulder blade. Pushed him off. And the look on Lawler's face tells the story. Grogan it is who gets I was about to say a well deserved try but only for the simple reason that he's been attacked down his flank in defence he's come up lacking but he's come up very much um, on the credit side with the attack down the right and brings Newcastle back now to a deficit of 10-6 Andrew Johns has struck his first kick beautifully He's on the side, 20 metres up. Look at that ground. It looks beautiful, doesn't it? There's the kick by Andrew Johns. Absolutely perfect with the length and the flags are up. So, 10 points to 8, Parramatta over Newcastle. Monday night football. Monday night football. Welcome back to it. As Chris Lawler takes us into the next passage of play. It's been a rather helter-skelter affair here at uh, Parramatta Stadium. In front of a good crowd. First, uh, first Monday night football match to the western suburbs. And they have really answered the call. With uh, Jamie Ainsco playing it now just outside his own 30-metre line. And now Matthew Johns tries to find an opening. And as Peter Sterling has pointed out a couple of times, they're not frightened to run at Jim Dimmick. As Billy Peden goes into the match, and now Paul Harrigan takes them on, and three of them are required to pull him down. Five tackles gone. Paul McBlain's in charge of this match, if you've just joined us, as Ainsco puts in a kick that finds its way down to Maybon, who scored a try, and then he, he, he runs away from Peden's tackle before he's brought down by Brad Godden and Andrew Johns. This was Kelly, who's played a, a leading role for Parramatta out in the centres. He's a good kid, Shane Kelly. And uh, that is Morgan now. That's a great tackle there, head on by Andrew Johns, showing the strength of the halfback. Front row running at him, he drove him back. And although he's getting a rest now, Paul Marquette has come up with some absolute bell ringers in this game so far to set the trend for the Newcastle forward pack. That is Campbell. He's arrested just outside the 40-metre line. This is the last tackle to Dimmick for the right-footed kick. In fact, he hasn't been kicking as much tonight as normal. Um, it's been left mainly to Gary Freeman. And that could come back to the fact that uh, Dimmick 
He's not 100%, but then again, he hasn't been all season, has he? Uh, he was on one leg against the Roosters last week. I think he's on half a leg tonight. Harrigan comes to the bench for a well-deserved rest as the forwards throw it around between themselves and Butterfield plays it under the tackle of Russell Wire, then away for Matthew Johns to unload for Ainsco, and Ainsco is put down right on the half -way. line back now for Matthew Johns and then it's with Glanville and Glanville looking to get it away but there's a lot of blue and gold jumpers around it fifth tackle McCormick Andrew Johns and into the air Maybon coming up out of the deep and he takes it well he's only a very small man but uh, he took that got his body side on to the oncoming defenders this pass finishes up with Lawler and Grogan is there to pull him down. 28 metres out from the Parramatta line now. And Jason Smith taking a solid tackle there from Billy Pete. Smith has probably been, to this point in time, along with Maybon, the best in the Parramatta side. Now, this will bring a penalty. It's gone to the Eels. Anthony Bonus trying to play the ball. And uh, he was pushed down, according to referee Paul McBlade. There's Troy Fletcher coming together with Anthony Bones, the two number 15s. And I think they've used Adam Muir, the Newcastle side, much better this evening than maybe what we've seen the last couple of weeks. Got to be a bit monotonous seeing him take an inside ball from Matthew Johns, always on the fringe of the ruck. He's taken the ball up a lot more from dummy half and only so often gone out in the back line, and that's been much more effective, more surprise element involved. Steve Roach, you've got a comment on Jim Demick. Yeah, I was just watching him after he made that tackle over there on the right-hand side of their defence, and it took him three or four rucks to get going. He's still hobbling on that knee, and it is no secret that Matthew Johns, the Newcastle 5'8", is running at him. Now Morgan setting up the attack for Parramatta. Second tackle gone, and they are 20 metres out as Dimmick slides the pass away for Russell Wire, and he is banged into the ground by Ainsco. Now back for Dimmick. Inside pass, finding Dean Pay, and Pay will play the ball. Eight metres out from the line, Campbell puts a kick in, and the ball goes over the dead ball line. So it'll come back to the 20 metre line for the restart. And they had a big line uh, spread to the left there, Parramatta, and when Campbell put the kick in, quite a few of them put their arms up, waving it around, a bit disappointed, I think, in the, not only the kick, but the final result as well. And every right to be disappointed. The fact was that the Newcastle fullback Robbie O'Davis was perfectly positioned. The ball had to stay in the in-goal area. It was an easy job for him to cover up. And this is Grogan. Glanville. And taken by Dimmick and over the top by Dean Pay. And they're 40 metres away from their own line. Trailing by two points, Newcastle. Gotten there in a contest against Dean Pay and Anthony Bonus. McCormick. Newer. Newer taken by Campbell, looking to unload. And then Bill Peden is there. Parramatta making sure they've got players around some of these uh, ball distributors, particularly Adam Muir, who is so proficient at the art. Now, Rod Maybon running towards Scott Mahn's wing. Mahn coming inside, but Maybon losing the ball, but it's a penalty, is it? Yes. Penalty to Parramatta, raking the ball out. And you would imagine from the distance that Paul McLean was away from that tackle, the touch judge may have given him a call. Keith Beecherman, Jamie Ainsco walking back. Andrew Johns, the big bomb. Gary Freeman trying to get through. Ran into one of the Newcastle players. Maybon takes the ball beautifully. That's to the right of the field. And Keith Beecham was the man who put the, the right hand in to rake the ball out. 5-4 so the penalties. Parramatta's way. Well, counts about even Stevens. 83 for Parramatta, 88 for Newcastle. There's Parramatta. Play the ball now, a couple of metres into Newcastle's area, and this is Morgan. Justin Morgan. Campbell angling it back in for Spence, and Spence gets it away for Morgan, who's wrapped up by McCormick. Now that was a futile exercise there from Matthew Spence. 
And now Dimmick. Dimmick. Almost hobbling back into the uh, into the arms of the defense as Jason Smith puts a kick in. Robbie O. Davis will bring it back. Not too far though. The chase from Parramatta was a buoyant one. And then from Ainsco across for Beecham. But look at the Eels. They are really on their toes tonight. They know the importance of this one. There's no doubt Newcastle do as well, but the Eels are really, really enthusiastic in this game tonight. A very good battle going on in the centres between Jamie Ainsco and Russell Wire, former teammates, good friends off the paddock. And every now and then when they come together, good natured band, a good ball there to Adam Mule, great tackle away from Jason Smith. Well, that was just a copybook tackle by Jason Smith. As uh, Andrew Johns or Matthew, it might have been, it was Andrew because he's putting them all on side as he runs down the park on the straight line. And Maybon is put down about 12 metres out from his own line for Freeman to serve it away for Scott Mann. And Mann put away by the Newcastle number 15, Troy Fletcher. And a knock on, so the scrum will go down just inside the Eels 20 metre line and half time not too far away. And is there a hand in there from Robbie McCormack? No doubt about it for mine. He's had a pretty good game too, Rob McCormack. Spent most of the year in second grade, putting the pressure on Lee Jackson. Finally got his chance about three weeks ago. There's the hand there. So Newcastle winning the scrum. And uh, on the first tackle, they're setting up, setting up to launch an attack at Parramatta. This is the second tackle, then for Glanville, and now for Fletcher. Fletcher pulled down, 10 metres out from the line. The Eels gathering up in defence. Matthew Johns uh, fading across the ground before picking up Adam Muir. And Muir has been well marked tonight. He's put down on the fourth tackle. McCormick, a long pass. Matthew Johns steps, and then Freeman takes him, gets a pass away, and Fletcher, Fletcher goes in, and the referee awards the try. Or does he? Hold on. I think you'll, this has got to be a forward pass, Raps. Yeah, it'll come from the, the far touch charge. Maybe his microphone is not working. Matthew Johns threw the ball and it was forward. Well, how lucky is that? He was just about to award the try. And all of a sudden, the touch, he's yelled out. And the, the Eel supporters love it. Well, the Parramatta players reacted straight away. They were all claiming... That was a forward pass. The big leftward step from Matthew Johns took him through. Gary Freeman coming across, Maybon up. And there's no doubt that is forward. So the Eels getting the benefit of the doubt just in front of half time. And despite that penalty, which is the 10th the of the game so far, the momentum is starting to turn towards the Newcastle side. The last couple of sets of six from the Parramatta team in attack have been very ordinary. Made little ground. Kicking game has gone off a little bit. Going up to half time, Newcastle just starting to warm to their task now as Lawler finds touch 30 out from his own line. Well, Peter, I'm thinking that Newcastle, they've got big forwards. They're starting to wear down their smaller opponents. Uh, you know, they're not that big, the Parramatta forwards. And they're starting to find out, starting to tire a bit. That's why I can't understand why they don't continue to play a little bit wider of the ruck. Parramatta, they were having so much success in the first 15 minutes. All of a sudden now trying to go up the middle of the ruck. Tough to do against this Newcastle side. Good ball. Morgan's pass was a beauty. Jason Smith was there. Jim Dimmick likewise. And then the support is offered by Spence. And Spence is made to play the ball right on the halfway line. But Parramatta keeping the ball alive there. And again, Jason Smith with that flat pass. Finding Lawler. And Grogan wraps him up. Lawler, a gain of 10 metres, and then Freeman. Freeman, away it goes from Pay. Then it's out with Matthew Spence again, and he's put down just inside the 40 metre line. As Dean Pay rushes into dummy half for Dimmick to put in a left foot kick. The right winger going down the ground, but Keith Beecham back there in time for Newcastle to take it well. Beecham then's a couple of metres out from his own line. Ainsco. And Jamie Ainsco put away. Eight metres out from his own line. Half time. Only about three and a quarter minutes away. And a kick on the fourth tackle there from Jim Dimmick looking to catch out Newcastle. But it was well read by Beecham and the fullback O'Davis. 
Penalty here for Parramatta inside the 10. And the Parramatta player limping back into position. Looks like it's Russell Wire taking his time to come back. Under three minutes to go in this first half. Kick from Andrew Johnson. Nice touch on the halfway line. McCormick taking the tap on the halfway line. And Harrigan to the 40. As the seconds in the first half tick away. And Matthew Johns sending a forward back in towards the play the ball area. There's the Newcastle back line deep and wide. And Muir struggles to get away from the tackle of Jason Smith. Eventually it was secured by Dean Pay. And eventually Muir is able to play the ball. I thought a penalty might have been brought there. The Johns brothers combine. Robbie o. Davis comes in from the back. The support goes in field. Beecham did well. Positioned himself beautifully. This time it's a try to Newcastle. And the touch judge and the referee, they will not deny them. No doubt about this one. And one of the pet moves from Newcastle. They're getting numbers on the Parramatta side. And just have a look at the far winger for Parramatta come flying in as they go wide. We freeze play there. Look at this man coming in to, to cover this player, and that allows Robbie O. Davis to get on the outside. Play continues. There's the big hole. An overlap. Gary Freeman needed to make this tackle because then Mabon could have stayed with Beecham, but when Freeman missed the tackle, he was caught in no man's land. Rod Mabon, a great try, perfectly executed, and you'll see the outside men from Parramatta come flying in here and get caught completely out. Oh, beautiful set play, and it's all precision. And... Uh... The decoys did their job, Robert Davis did his job, and Beecham finished it off. And 12 points to 10 the score as we come to the break. More Jason th Smith being assisted off. Well, he was down all the time that try was being scored, so they were, were reduced to 12 men. I recall calling him trying to make a tackle on Adam Muir, and he might have worn, he might have worn a, a boot in the face. Just inside the 20-metre line for Andrew Johns, who is just off centre. 12 points to 10. His side in front. And two tries apiece. Andrew prepares from reasonably close proximity to add the extras, and that he does. So half-time is only a matter of seconds away. 14 points to 10. And another look at the try, beautifully rehearsed and the execution absolutely spot on and Beecham Beecham coming in off his wing finished it off nicely and no time left for a restart that is half time Newcastle by four points in Monday night football Peter and Paul will come back and take a look at the first half for you in just a moment here's a break and then we're back Welcome back to Parramatta Stadium with Newcastle leading the home side by four points as we come up to the resumption of tonight's Monday night football. Steve Roach on the sidelines. Yeah, just in the Parramatta dressing room at half time, Jason Smith in all sorts of trouble getting stitches to a mouth wound. Uh, he collected a boot. He has got concussion. They don't know whether he'll be back yet. But uh, Ronnie Hillich was pretty happy with their first half. He thought they were dropping off a little bit around the market area late in the first half, and they've got to correct that. While for Newcastle, Malcolm really wants his team to, to lift their intensity. He thought they started to roll over the top of Parramatta the last 10 minutes, and he wants his team to start exactly the same way. Steve Roach on the sidelines. As... Parramatta start this uh, second half this all important second half because there probably is no way back from defeat in tonight's encounter that's what this is all about really tonight it's uh, to decide which side goes on and has a chance of making the quarterfinals and that's shocking news for Parramatta fans and the Parramatta side though Jason Smith in all likelihood for this second 40 minutes I'll miss him desperately. And this is the role on that Steve Roach was talking about. A good, strong charge from Butterfield. That allows Muir to go centre field. And a knock on off. It was all slow motion stuff there. Now, Jason Smith, of course, was proving outstanding. And a real thorn in the side of Newcastle. 
and right there is uh, the incident that uh, necessitated his removal from the ground and uh, some stitching to be done inside the mouth Troy Campbell then under the the force of the Paul Harrigan and Tony Butterfield tackle Parramatta 32 meters away from the Newcastle line as McKenzie comes back now Marty McKenzie one of uh, the two fairly small front rowers really as Dimmick uses the other one Morgan did well Kelly is taken by Grogan and then the ball comes out this is going to be a scrub well it came out but I'm looking for the knock on Paul McBlain was about 10 12 meters away from that one so it's a good hit from Grogan and where does the ball go? No, oh, I thought it went backwards. So Newcastle turning that Parramatta attack around and bringing it out on their their set of six, their first in the second half. And Matthew uh, Andrew Johns is tidied up now, uh, just inside the 30-meter line second set in fact this is Muir and held by Dean Pay able to promote for McCormick to go back and away from Glanville for Harrigan and Harrigan's pass comes off the rump of one of the Parramatta players then it was kicked back and it's Andrew Johns who's eventually put down plenty of ball movement but no go forward now Butterfield writing the ship Marquette some very big tackles in the first half. McCormick, Muir back for the kick from Andrew Johns. And he waits it down towards the Parramatta 10 metre line where Maybon slides out to the 20. This is Lawler. Lawler back on his own 20 metre line as Parramatta now set about taking the ball down the other end of the park. Trailing by four points. Scott Mann to the 40 metre line now. Getting themselves ready for the kick. And probably the next tackle. McKenzie put away by Muir and Harrigan. And now for free. And his kick standing up and Beecham takes possession for Newcastle on his own 30 meter line so their first tackle has been made on the 40 and Ainsco and Grogan combine Grogan beating the tackle of much more and is two meters on his own side of halfway center of the ground McCormick Harrigan and back for McCormick as the whistle goes and the penalty is awarded to Newcastle 40 meters out they take the tap penalty and Andrew Johns is able to push away from one, takes the play back into the centre of the ground, and they're 25 metres out from the line now. McCormack and Muir. Muir stepping away from Dimmick, and then back for Andrew Johns. A floating pass finds Glanville. One-handed pass then for Butterfield. 20-metre line underneath them now. Harrigan. Andrew Jones coming back into where the ball was played on the previous occasion. Numbers to the right for Newcastle. And that's the way they're going. Off McCormick and Matthew Johns and then Ainsco stands and puts it back from Harrigan for Andrew Johns. Away from Campbell's would-be tackle and wrapped up and put away by much more. Still a couple of tackles left for Newcastle. Matthew Johns, he puts a kick in. Beecham is after it, but it goes over the sideline. It will come out for the 10-metre scrum to restart. It was only on the fourth tackle, but he took the odds to it. A good sign for Newcastle is that they're starting to get some offloads going, some second phase play. Paul Harrigan, Adam Muir. And if they get into a touch football game, then 
put them out in all sorts of trouble because Newcastle love to keep the ball alive and do it so well. The scrum screwing around. Blaine straightening the scrum up before Freeman offloads for Russell Wire. Wire and Aids go. And then quite a personal duel out there. Dean Pay. Now Scott Mann. And pulled down by Paul Marquette. His defence has been one of the features of this game. Dimmick with a face pass, picking up Maybon. Maybon away for Lawler. Lawler's left the ball back in the field of play. Deflected back. Dived on by Parramatta. Six more tackles. 40 metres out from their own line. That is McKenzie. Driving defence by Newcastle. Harrigan and McCormick. Dean Pay. Much more. Campbell. Freeman. Dimmick. Now, Maybon again, and Lawler comes in off his wing. Gets a pass off for Dimmick. Dimmick gives it back, but Newcastle have got it. O'Davis. Oh, Muir. Well, it's Parramatta who have gone back to how they started the first half, attacking that same side of the field. A mistake now from Newcastle. Adam Muir's not too happy about that. And uh, neither is Paul McLean because he called out Muir. He's better off just keeping his mouth shut and playing the game. Well, he's put him in the sin bin now. Adam Muir blowing right up. And if this comes back, if Parramatta are able to pile on some points that turn out to be winning points during his absence from the field, it will come back to haunt Adam Muir the night that he blew up at Parramatta Stadium. Steve Roach on the sidelines. Well, McBlain gave him the option of shutting up or, or taking the caution, and Muir just kept on going, so he said, mate, you're going to the sin bin. See you later. What we just saw there, he does a lot, you know, Adam Muir. He really tries to get the penalty in those play the ball situations. He milks it to the best he can. And he's just giving it to McBlain. <laughs> Ains goes not far behind him. Having said that, I mean, geez, you can see that he has got some right to complain. But yeah, there's a way of doing so, but isn't there? To finish up in the sin bin, I mean, that is stupidity. I'm not arguing that. Lawler. And his kick looks okay. Yes, Lawler's got the two points. That narrows it. 14 to 12 now in Monday Night Football. Newcastle in front. Welcome back at the 50th minute of an absorbing match at Parramatta Stadium where the right to contest the Optus Cup quarterfinals could well be on the line here. Certainly for the loser, it's the end of the year. At the moment, Newcastle by two, but they are down to 12 men. Adam Muir already has given two points to Parramatta by mouthing off. Now the Eels throw the ball about. Spence. Campbell and Freeman. Maybon, they keep going to the left of the ground. 
three times they've done that in the last five minutes with uh, Freeman finding Maybon down the left of the ground oh Davis in spectacular fashion well, he's, been, he's been one Newcastle player over the last two months whose performances haven't suffered that's a great take and better still was the fact he was able to keep control of the football despite landing so awkwardly and there he is getting involved again inspirational player Robbie o. Davis McCormack match delicately poised Ainsco and Freeman having a jostle up as Butterfield goes to ground but the penalty has been given it's against Russell Wire. that's good refereeing from Paul McLean I think he's played the advantage very well tonight he's allowed the team to go on with the ruck once the tackle's been completed as it was by Wyatt then he's he's come up with the penalty and I think that's fine I think the more advantage played the better the players like it he seems to keep his cool too doesn't he McBlain his demeanor never changes so he just talks to them as human beings rather than talk down to the players Harrigan did well McCormack pushing away and then smothered by the defense of Campbell and much more Andrew Johns using Butterfield now Dean Pay mauling in over the top. About this time of the year, the Dean Pay starts to. Oh, that's a shocking play. The ball. It's it's a penalty. Now here's the sin bin for Dean Pay. Oh, that's square up. That's ridiculous. Now has he sent him to the sin bin? I'm sure he has. Yes, Dean Pay's been sent to the sin bin. Yeah, he has. This is very interesting. This because I felt that the man who played the ball actually walked forward. Dean Pay, if you watch this, holds his ground. This is a gift two points for the Newcastle side. As Pete said, it looks like a bit of a square up. And the Eels crowd have got the chant going. Let's just have a look. It's Butterfield taking it forward. Morgan and Dean Pay combined in the tackle. Now, I thought that Pay got up and marked up. And that it's Butterfield who walks forward. So, yeah, Pay's got the spot. It's not a professional foul, that's for sure. And, and I don't think that there's any abuse coming from Dean Pay. So it's a dead set square up. Well, we've gone from giving McBlain a rap exactly 60 seconds ago. <laughs> now he's and now he's on the chopping block. I've I'm still not convinced that Dean Pay did not say something. Certainly he couldn't have sent him to the sin bin for what we saw. What we didn't hear might be the cause. Two points to Newcastle. 16 to 12. At least Adam Muir is feeling a little bit better. I'm told that there was nothing said. All that Dean Pay did, from what I could see, was he... He didn't mark up directly in front of the man playing the football. But then again, as Paul Vorton maintains, Pay rose to mark up and Butterfield chose to move to one side to play the ball. Is that what, the way you saw that, it? That's the way I saw it. You know, I may be wrong. McBlain's out there, we're not. But uh, that decision could be described as harsh, to say the least. Well, I would dearly love to know exactly what happened there. Steve Roach and Andrew Voss on the sidelines. It'll be... I think interesting to know exactly what happened there. The reason Dean Pay is in the sin bin. This is Matthew John. He's 40 metres out from the Newcastle line. And now Andrew Johns, that shade of red, still evident on, uh, on the cranium. As Matthew Johns rubbers it down. Rod Maybon. Rod Maybon knew it was going to be difficult, but he didn't mean to make it more difficult. He gets back into the field of play, takes his time, waiting for a dummy half. Man, there might be a couple of signs creeping in here, Peter, that don't look good for Parramatta. I think they're in some trouble, Ray. This penalty helps a little bit. Scott Mann, who I think's had a fairly unhappy match tonight, lost the football, a shake of the head from Marquette. Rod Maybon did the right thing. He knew he, he had a tough bounce coming up, but he's actually kicked it back into his own in, in goal area. 
And he did a brave thing. He dived at the feet of the players to make sure that he wasn't kept in that area. And I just think they're starting to open up a little bit, Parramatta, and, and the Newcastle forwards getting on top. Harrigan, I think, has had a great game tonight. 22 metres out from their own line now, Parramatta. I must say this has been a wonderful atmosphere here at Parramatta Stadium. I've commented on the size of the crowd. Um, taking a guess, I, I suppose it's up around the 20,000 mark, if not uh, a little bit better. But the atmosphere has been really great. I guess that comes with this time of the year. As Dimmick goes infield for Morgan, and they're on the halfway line. Shane Russell. Four points the difference. My apologies, Pete. Sorry, Ray. Shane Russell on the far wing for Parramatta as Chris Lawler kicks at Robbie O'Davis. Good take here. Willie Shepard's behind his own man, but gets out of trouble. And Steve Roach, you, you found something out about that McLean ruling? Yeah, I thought it was an ordinary call, but the ruling is interfering in the play the ball. Well, even supposing that he, he was guilty of that, was there any professional foul intended? Why would you want to give a professional foul when you've got 13 on 12? Butterfield now playing it back for McCormick. I mean, Dean Pay is not the village idiot. 40 metres away from the Parramatta line. Matthew Johns. A little grubbing kick, the regathers on, it is on, he kicks again, that came off Parramatta, that's play on, the ball's on the ground for Beecham, six more tackles, and Beecham will play it, Matthew Johns, oh magical work, now from McCormick, through Ainsco, Andrew Johns is with it, 12 metres out from the line, Muir comes back, now it's Ainsco, then inside for Big Harrigan. He's pulled down three metres out. Tackle made by Bonus. Knock on. Knock on by McCormack. Well, they're hitting their straps, aren't they? The Newcastle side. A piece of Matthew John's magic got them down into the quarter. He's been standing very deep all night as Rod Maybon. John saw that, put the grubber in, regained it, then put that one in. It's six more. I don't know that John's realised it. Pops one out the back. And from here, on the end of it, there's a tiniest of knock-ons. He was standing very close to Harrigan, was McCormack. The Chief comes off. Matthew Spence prepares to come on. 16 to 12. Yeah, you can only agree with uh, Snorky. He's had a great game, the Chief. He's led the way. 18 tackles and 13 hit-ups. Troy Campbell. No shortage of Newcastle defence. Peden, Muir, Matthew Johns. This is Anthony Bonus. Oh dear, oh dear. What a tackle though. Mark Lanville. And the Newcastle players come over to congratulate him. A beauty. Big advantage now for the night. He got him and drove and drove and drove. Ainsco's helping. Allowing for the mistake from Bonus there. And, gee, there was very little he could do about it, I suppose. Once they put him on the end of the... Uh, on the end of the train, he had no hope. But he has done a couple of things, Anthony Bonus, that suggest he's got a future. Ainsco runs around them, gets between them. Oh, Grogan can't catch it! Oh, gee, I'll tell you what, Ainsco... He did everything asked of him. He's been fairly quiet tonight, Jamie Ainsco, but on this occasion he gets on the outside of Stuart Kelly. The little dummy helped. Gets the left arm free around the back of Shane Russell and Rogan, Lee's upset as well. Is this R rated here tonight? Did we put an R up in the corner? <laughs> oh, the lip is having a field day. <laughs> I think the lip reader turned it set off a while back. Buddy McKenzie. Friday night we go to Auckland, to Ericsson Stadium, to bring you Auckland in their continuing endeavours to make the quarterfinals against Canterbury. Trey Campbell. Count 
the herd while you're down there, Fatso. Then three. Away for dinner. The run around. The right foot kick by Freeman. O'Davis with some work to do. The Eels are coming quickly. O'Davis is caught. Line drop out. Great chase. Oh, it's a great tackle from Chris Lawler. He's done some things in the last couple of weeks that I was unaware of that was in his game. He really has blossomed. He's a halfback playing on the wing. He was superb last week, and, and this is a big play in an important match. Robbie O'Davis fields a ball. Looks like he's going to make it back in. Doesn't matter what the tackle looked like. It was an effective one. Oh. Newcastle about to give the football back to them. This big crowd starting to rise to the blue and gold. They know they're in trouble. Mackenzie. Freeman, Dimmick, inside ball, Spence. Centre of the ground, Parramatta with Freeman on the left, Dimmick on the right, Freeman's with it. Dummies inside to Maybot. Newcastle didn't swallow it. Adam Muir back on for the Knights. Then Lawler, Dimmick, Dimmick. And Glanville and Ainsco bring him down on the fifth tackle. Spence, Freeman to the air. Down she comes. Ah, oh, Robbie O'Davis. That is beautiful stuff. Having fullbacks, neither of them are big men. No, he's having a blinder, Robbie O'Davis, tonight, the Queensland State of Origin fullback. He's answered every challenge. Dean Pay now comes back on. Yeah, the fullbacks have been superb tonight, haven't they both? Adam Muir, his first touch since coming back on, takes the play 38 out. The roll now coming. Billy Peden makes a good charge. Really makes it at the halfway line. Sixth tackle now. Edwin jolting back as Pay came over the over the top with the tackle. He gets very aggressive at this time of the year, Dean Pay. Who'll ever forget his performances for Canterbury last year? Almost single-handedly, he led the charge for the Blue and Whites. I don't know that he's going to get that opportunity this year. But well, Maybon there just took a bit of a knock. Jamie Ainsco came flying through. Probably got a little bit of a cork. But Shane Russell takes it centre field. Really can't afford to lose Maybon. Jason Smith out of play. Dean Pay put away. Much more running back into the traffic. Gary Freeman's kicking game has uh, had extra workload tonight, Steve Roach, with Jim Dimmick seeming to opt for Freeman to take most of the kicks. Here they go again. Kelly, ankle tapping, tackle. Then he gets it away. Morgan for Dimmick. Dimmick angles, puts the kick in. The race is on now, but it beats them over the dead ball line. Yeah, great idea by Jim Dimmick because there were three unmarked Parramatta players right out on the flanks. Unfortunately for him, the kick went astray. A good ball this to once again find the space. Justin Morgan's played well. Kelly gets a miracle ball back in before he goes into touch from a very strong tackle there. And it goes to Dimmick and he can see out wide that it was on, but the kick was too big. And Rod Maybon leaving the field to a, a fine ovation. Russell Wyatt drops back to fullback. Some injury problems now, proving to be a real problem for the Parramatta team. Lee Jackson now out of dummy half. He's on for the Knights, his first run in this game so far. And his freshness might be important too because the, the play the ball area, there might be some, a few metres starting to appear late in this game. Oh. John Hiddles, who puts it out on the floor. Didn't even go, go close, remotely close. I do think the difference in the game at the moment, Steve Roach, is, the, is when Parramatta have the football in attack, they're not really putting a lot of pressure on their opponents, apart from that one movement down the left-hand side. Newcastle, they seem to be making the metres much more easily. Well, I mentioned it earlier in the, in the game, uh, Peter, the Parramatta forwards were going across field a little bit. Anthony Bonus straightened them up a little bit, but far too many yards made by Newcastle in the middle of the ruck. This is Russell Wire working down the blind side, and meeting the full wrath of a tackle from Billy Peden. And now it's Dean Pay and Pay 
three of them in to make the tackle Fletcher Muir and Butterfield away now for McKenzie and again three of them there to make the tackle Harrigan combining with Jackson and Butterfield now for Dimmick around the back picking up the fullback Russell Wire and Parramatta then their turn to launch an attack trailing by four and about 14 minutes to go Lawler and this is the last tackle for Parramatta Freeman calls it on the left puts the grubbing kick in and across there goes O'Davis he was hoping it might go into touch Well, the kick was a good one from Gary Freeman because it forced Robbie O'Davis into making an important decision. O'Davis was willing this ball over the sideline. He didn't want to pick it up because he'd have been taken over. So in the end, he just put the boot out. And it gives away possession. A great opportunity for the Eels here. Ten out, a deep back line set. I bet you if he had it over again, he would have dived on it. Freeman. Freeman running from the base of the scrum, running into the arms of Brad Godden, picked up and dumped on the ground. Penalty, penalty, it's a differential penalty. He got them for being inside the five. Now, it's Dimmick. He uh, holds it back for Russell Wyatt. And Dimmick will play it. Played back for Campbell. And there's players in motion all over the park. The Dean play is put down. He's five metres out from the line. The Eels are behind by four. Here's their best chance. Spence is with it. And Spence is held and put away. Newcastle, their defence being tested. As they go back, Jim Dimmick, Dimmick across, knocked on, I'd say, by Beecham. Six more tackles. Parramatta, they'll get six more chances. 20 metres off the line. Morgan. Morgan running straight at Butterfield. 16 to 12. Pay. Straight and hard. Oh, good tackle, that, from Jackson. Now Freeman. Freeman holding it back. Inside ball for Dimmick. Demick gets it away, and that is Spence. Spence is held. He'll be made to play at nine metres out from the line. Campbell, Freeman, Lawler, and then McKenzie. Tackled by Muir, Lawler, then away. The winger will score, yes, Russell. Russell scores on the Michael Cronin touchline corner and Parramatta are back to level. Ah, oh, sustained attack there. What about Dean Pay? The play of the ball after getting smashed was sensational. This is a beautiful ball from Justin Morgan to Shane Russell. Justin Morgan has passed the football very well tonight in tough situations. But it came from the, the build-up beforehand. Chris Lawler good, got a good quick play of the ball from Marty McKenzie. And that was a great pass from Morgan. Once again, some very ordinary defence out wide there from the Newcastle side. Outnumbered. I don't know what to do with it. To come up, stay back. And defensively, Grogan's been just completely uh, out of place tonight. What about Dean Pay? Oh, he's just really fun. Good the last 10 minutes, hasn't he? He had a fair nick of beating Carl Lewis in the long jump, and then he got up quickly and played the football. And now, Chris Lawler. He had a kick last week to win the game. That was a field goal attempt from just inside his own half, and he will not get a more difficult conversion attempt. Not the ideal side for a left-foot kicker. He does hook the ball left to right. But he's got to start this a fair way to the left of the posts and hope that he gets his geometry right. I'm just trying to work out in my own mind what one point would mean to these sides. I'm just wondering whether a draw... At the end of the day, adds up to self-destruction anyway. I don't think we'll see a draw tonight, Ray. Okay. Not with Thank the you. amount of time left. We've got 11 minutes. We've got field goal exponents on both teams. And let's put the Kai wash on that thought. That's good. Damas has spoken. I'd say it's odds on that little finish all squared up. And how Lawler on the touchline. Peter's told you where it is. There it goes, and it's it's just away to the right of the uprights. So we're all locked up again. What about Monday night football? The closeness of the scores. 16 all, 69 minutes gone.
Welcome back. 10 minutes of this game remaining. And 16 points all. Russell Wire, who is now playing fullback for the Eels. They've lost Rod Maybon, one of their chief attacking weapons. Well, he's actually back on his feet. He looks like he might come in back into the battle. And I think they'll need him in this last 10 minutes as Dean Pay, who's been tremendous since coming back from the sin bin, carries the ball 25 metres. Now Campbell takes it another 10. What's the story on Orr? Campbell letting go with a left as he went to ground with the ball. He's rough and tough and he's aggressive, Campbell, but he's got to learn when you've got the football, you don't do stupid, dumb things. <laughs> Anyway, Steve Rates, what's the story on Maybon? Yeah, Bruce hit for Ronnie Maybon. He's just trying to jog it out now. They need him on the field. Well, another great take here from Robbie O'Davis. We've wrapped Paul Harrigan tonight. I've got to tell you that Tony Butterfield has been as good as the Chief. The two front rowers have been superb as Aids go. Straight up the middle of the ruck, tackled just inside his own territory. Of course, the worry for Parramatta, one of their worries is that they're against one of the sides that has two magnificent field goal exponents in the ranks. Oh, Muir has made the mistake. Parramatta, no knock on, said the referee. I thought Parramatta might have knocked on there. Russell Wire strides in from the back. Formerly with Newcastle and Western Suburbs, where he played alongside Jamie Ainsco. Gimmick was there at the same time. Plenty of feeling out there, even if there is mateship. Morgan. Morgan. Spell splendid game from him, the young front rower. Dean Pay. Driving defence by Harrigan. Last tackle. Campbell. And there's Lawler. Charged down by Newcastle. No knock on. Russell is on the last tackle here. Uh, six against being signalled. Has it been signalled? Spence is tackled on the 20 metre line. Well, that's the penalty you pay for going for the charge down. This will be a penalty. It's a penalty to Parramatta. Right in front, 20 metres out. Yeah, for not standing directly in front and striking at the football. Keith Beecham's the man. Oh, what about these Monday nights? Good well, I'm trying to think what has been the broadest margin we've had between two sides in Monday night football. Here's the reason for the penalty. Well, he could have got Keith Beecham on any one of maybe two or three things, but he got him for striking and he got him for interfering with the man playing the ball. I don't, I don't think that it's a harsh penalty. I understand that it's harsh because it's in front of the uprights in this situation. Again, it's on the ground. There's nothing wrong with striking for it, but then he leans all over the man playing the ball, and that you can't do. And he wasn't standing square on either Raps. He was standing to the side, but Newcastle only got themselves to blame. Mistake made. Lack of communication out wide between Matthew Johns and some of his outside backs. The Chief looks on. It was a good charge down on the attempted field goal from this man. Russell cleaned up and brought it back. Bonus coming on for Matthew Spence and Lawler moves in. He's got it. Lawler gets the two points. The Parramatta fans love it. They know that they've got a chance with a win tonight of making the quarterfinals 18-16 their way. And this set of six is vital as Andrew Johns restarts. Russell Wire. He was injured in a tackle and he made a bust not long ago and you can see he's really struggling to bring it back 15 out from his own line. He must get a good set of six here and a, and a kick away at the end so that the opposition pick the football up at the other end of the field. I'll muscle Thank up you. Newcastle. Scott Mann moving into dummy half and taking, taking oh. a run himself. He ran into the shoulder of Muir. Now, Dimmick. Dimmick carries it a forward and uh, Fletcher was there with Peden making the tackle on the Australian representative and then Dean Pay with a struggling run. He's lost the ball, did it get some help? He's going to put a scrum down and Dean Pay will have to button up 
He's already been to the bin once. Well, Billy Peden made the tackle on Dean Pay. Swings into the ground. And punches the ball out. So he's got away with one. And it could be one of the most crucial rulings that they've got their way this season. Ainsco slips on halfway. I've got to say, Paul McGuane hasn't got a lot of help from his touch judges and a couple of stealing the ball charges in this match. He's got a couple wrong that you would think one of the touch judges would have seen. Now Jackson, oh, diving forward, Matthew Johns. No defence was evident. He did well to get up and make some yards. Then Jackson, now Andrew. Puts on a sprint, but he's working in traffic. Freeman and Pay. Jackson. Matthew Johns to the air. They're all on side. Fletcher leads the chase. Oh, Russell right. Wire came down with Scotty Mann. Two fullbacks, really. And Mann has got it for Parramatta. Spectacular stuff. Russell Wire and Scott Mann. And it is Scott Mann who comes down with it. I'll tell you what, if that touched Russell Wire, Mann was offside. Exactly. That could have been a penalty. In fact, I don't want to bog down on it. I think it should have been a penalty to Newcastle. Dimmock. Campbell. That's a good kick. Oh, Davis. Newcastle have got to play the game down the other end of the park. Four minutes, under four minutes to go. Closer to three. Twenty-one for Newcastle. Help. Matthew Johns, oh, his pass had a question mark on it. Oh, Davis. 21 for Newcastle. I'll say it again as I seek a second time. They'll let me drown these two. It's gone off for Rainsco now. Oh, and Craigie, oh, Rabbi. Craigie. Oh, thanks very much. We won't let you down, Rabbi. Thank you. Just throw me a life, boy. You're on fire. Played by, play by Krogan. Andrew Johns, a floater. Butterfield. Oh, it's gone backwards. Beecham. Beecham beats Mann. The ball goes six to ground. Again. Was it touched by Parramatta? Yes. And six more tackles. Beecham a dummy half. Oh, that'll be a penalty. Against Dean Pay. Well, you wouldn't do it, would you? You wouldn't take the chance even at 18-16 with three to go. Well, he took the chance. And Newcastle with uh, under two minutes on the clock. Harrigan will play it, 12 metres out. Last throw of the dice for the Newcastle side. Butterfield, there was an appeal for lost ball. Jackson, Matthew Johns, then O'Davis. O'Davis has put away. Five metres out from the line. Now they go to Muir. Muir's lost the ball. Harriman has got it. Parramatta with the football and Gary Freeman. Mann. Seven metres out from their own line and only a minute on the clock. Parramatta, they've got this match barring a miracle. Campbell. Just inside the 20 metre line. Parramatta by two. That is bonus. Must watch the charge down. Gary Freeman, slow play the ball from bonus. It's gone to Morgan centre field. They'll come flying through on the kick in Newcastle, especially the markers, you would think. Lawless kick. He was taken late. I think he's going to penalise. Oh. He does. He penalises for the late shot on Lawler, and that is the ball game. Parramatta, they live to fight another day.
Newcastle's chances of making the quarters evaporating tonight. But the post-mortems on this match are going to ring in the ears for many, many hours to come. Parramatta winning the game by two points. 18 points to 16. And the blue and gold fans, they've been long waiting for a sniff of a quarter-final. They're not there yet. But they've got more chance after tonight than Newcastle. But as I said, There'll be some hard luck stories told on this one, particularly by Newcastle. A controversial first try allowed to Parramatta will be at the forefront of criticism from the Newcastle benches.